If everyone can please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So we'll go ahead and start with our introductions. At the far end of the table, we have Kevin Metcalf, Board Director, Wayne Staples, Board Vice President and CFO, Jackie Snedden, Board President, Jean Sandoval, Board Secretary. We have Eric Zarr, our Assistant General Manager. I'm Jerry Mupo, your General Manager. We also have Cindy Graves, our Activities Director. <laughs> and Tad Creasy, our Regional Director from First Service Residential. Okay, just a, I only have a couple of announcements, which is great. Just a, a reminder that when the homeowners are having guests that are going to be entering the community on an extended visit and they're given a guest pass, the guest pass is good for the, their entire visit. We're asking that the, the guests maintain or retain that, that pass and use it during their entire visit. Um, the passes get quite costly. They average anywhere from four to $800 a month just for the replacement of the passes. So if we can make sure that we're reusing those passes through their entire visit, that'd be great. Um, also, I had the opportunity to sit at the front desk for a few hours this week, and in one of the drawers, I noticed that there is a, an envelope filled with keys. And a number of those keys are obviously vehicle keys. They've got the security codes on them. And so if you know of anybody that has lost their keys, please make sure that they come to the front desk and pick those up. And then a reminder, we're having a town hall meeting for the budget presentation on September 29th, and that's at 6 p.m. in the ballroom. And then the last, um, last announcement is, unfortunately, on Friday, we experienced a theft in the lodge. One of the computers in the computer room was taken. And so, I, you know, we looked at the camera, and unfortunately, we were not able to um, visibly see who took the to, who took the computer, but I just want to make sure everyone's aware that we did have an event, and you know, unfortunately, make sure all your valuables are protected and with your person. Don't leave them laying around because I I'm not we're not sure what's going on. I think we need to probably clarify that this was one of the new ones that was not was it just the screen. It, it was the, the box. The it was box. it was just the box. Unfortunately, yeah, the. Yeah, they were, they're really small. They're about this size, and so they're easily transported. But unfortunately, um, we will replace it. But um, we do, we had an event. All right. Okay. And I've just got something I'd like to talk about with the residents. Um, there seems to be a, perhaps, a misunderstanding of uh, the duties of our lodge staff. Uh, they're not only responsible for sitting at the front desk and reading and helping residents as they come into the lodge, but they also have those other duties as a sign that we've all had in our work lives. And that includes breakdown and setups of the rooms for use, helping individual residents if they're having problems, let's say in the computer room with one of the computers, setting up the motion pictures, and all those other responsibilities, monitoring the uh, lodge pool and such as that. Well, this last weekend, for some reason, there were a few residents here in the community who decided that the lodge staff were not doing their jobs and told them face to face that they weren't doing their jobs because they weren't at the desk, I guess, when those particular residents came in. And I think that that is not an appropriate way to um, respond to our staff that are very hard working and doing the best they can to keep everything up and make things as easy for our use as we can. And the idea is if there is ever a situation that you feel a person of the staff has not done something you felt was appropriate 
or felt they could do something better, it's not to, appro uh, to approach that staff person, but contact Jerry. She's the one that would determine, it wouldn't have an idea if there's something that could be done to better the, the service and, or such a thing. But please, the staff is working as hard as they can and have a lot of duties to do. And so be patient when someone's not at the front desk. Because we would, uh, during the weekends, we would love to have staff there 24 7 is what, when you're here at the building through the whole hours. But uh, we do have limited staff on the weekends. So I appreciate your uh, being considerate to staff. And if you can, pass that along to your friends and neighbors that they really are working hard. Any other announcements? No, I think that's it. All right, we'll start with our homeowner input, which is limited to three minutes per homeowner, and only one request to speak for may be submitted per homeowner. There will be no sharing or passing of time to another person. <clears throat> homeowner input may be held for a maximum period of 30 minutes before the board meeting begins to allow the board to proceed with the business portion of the meeting. This portion of the meeting is limited to board participation only. Residents are welcome and encouraged to stay for the full meeting to witness the business of the corporation taking place by your governing agents. And we do have some speaker forms. We'll start with Penny McDonald. Thank you, Penny. Um, just a, a couple of recommendations. Um, we, we, the association, have entered into a memorandum of un understanding with the City of Beaumont Police Department to come in and do patrols. Unfortunately, we are low priority. You know, they come in as time permits. However, I would strongly encourage homeowners to ask for additional patrols in here. You know, as more, as more homeowners call in, they'll see the necessity of it and send more patrols in here. Um, so if everyone can do that, uh, I think we would get a better response. But we are looking at other alternatives to try and control the speed. Okay, our, our next speaker is Bob Melindy. I just had a question about the status of the lodge renovation, where that where that actual those plans stand. Bob, put the mic up. Uh, can we clarify? Are you talking about internal or external? No, this whole project that was uh, that we had a meeting. That is completely on hold until we find out what happens with Rec Center Three. So okay, yeah. I just wanted I just wanted it's, to confirm that from the from the yes, board. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Nothing's being done at this time. I just have some paperwork. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker is Barbara Morton. Barbara Morton, Morton, and two 
276 Box Springs Trail. This past Monday, Labor Day, where there will be no workers, no construction that I saw, and it was approximately 9 o'clock in the morning, I saw a car go down the street at 50 miles an hour. Something has to give. We're going to end up having somebody killed or severely injured if we don't get police in here. I had seen a policeman parked along four seasons. I went over and spoke to him about it. He realizes the problem, but that was basically all I said. So, just giving you warning. And I, I know he was going 50 because I can see the sign right down the street. Thank you, Barbara. Okay, I have no further speaker forms. On, on the speeding, I think, you know, we're all racking our brains of a way to reduce the speeding on Four Seasons Circle. And we recognize once the community is completely built out, it's going to be that much of a longer route on the full circle. And at this point, we've discussed a lot of different ways, and, and control seems to be the only way, you know, people have suggested speed bumps, that causes problems sometimes with emergency vehicles. Um, and I think the, unfortunately they're going so fast you can't get their license number. But if you ever can, that would be the best, you know, so we can get that information and we, we can take some action on that end. But with, right now, and we're looking for suggestions. Uh, if you have any or think of something, please submit it to safety and facilities because they're, they're noodling this and racking their brains of ways to reduce the traffic problem or the speeding problem in the community. So, any help would be appreciated. Okay, the next item on our agenda is the consent calendar. And the purpose of the consent calendar is to make a single motion to approve all included items. If for a particular reason an item needs to be discussed or pulled from the consent calendar, then a call to remove that item should be made by a board member. Currently on the consent calendar are the minutes from the August 13, 2015 meeting, the July 2015 financial statements. There were no investment recommendations and there were no liens or foreclosure actions for approval. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the consent calendar? So moved. Motion by Wayne Staples, do I second? Second. Second by Jean Sandoval, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Okay, next item is our treasurer's report. Good afternoon. Uh, through August, our financial, we were at uh, 7.2 million in assets, of which 5 million is in regional funds. Uh, here to date, we have a profit of $17,000. Our delinquencies, which everybody likes to hear about, uh, we have a total delinquencies of 47.5 thousand, of which we have 34 thousand allowance against that. Uh, of those, of the 47, uh, we have 10 that amount to about 37 thousand dollars. Those are the major delinquencies that we have. Um, one of those, the largest one, was supposed to go to foreclosure on September 5th. They moved it to October 5th. Um, the second largest one uh, was supposed to go to foreclosure on September 1st. Uh, they canceled that. They have no future date. Uh, we're looking at taking that one uh, and doing superior court action on that one. The others, we have one that's deceased. We have uh, three or four that are on uh, payment plans. Uh, so a total of 10 out of 1,288 homes is a 0.78% uh, uh, of the number of people that are living. Thank you, Wayne. Okay, report on executive session or actions taken between meetings. There was an executive session held uh, at 9 a.m. this morning, and during that executive session, there were four hearings for delinquencies. Two of those hearings, they had made uh, a payment, 
and two, we received no response. Therefore, the privileges were suspended. On liens and foreclosure actions, there were none. We did have enforcement hearing, four enforcement hearings. Two were resolved prior to the meeting, and two, we received no response. Therefore, their privileges were suspended. Under contracts, Automation Pride, who services our gates, Epstein, Grinnell, and Howell, our association legal counsel, and Web Pools had no changes, so the contracts were renewed with no changes. Labar Oxney, our insurance agent, the annual renewal for the common area policy was renewed with a reduction in premium of $1,857. And legal issues discussed, the board received a small claims order. So we'll go ahead and start our committee reports with architectural. Do we have, we received the minutes from the previous, from the committee meetings. Is there a representative? If not, will Bill Taylor from the Bistro come on up? I'm Bill Taylor, Chairman of the Bistro Committee. Bistro Committee met on Tuesday, August 25th. Management reported on problems and repairs to the kitchen. The kitchen drains were power washed last in July. The drains backed up during the PG-55 twist and cab ratio. It seems that the drain and the interceptor are in the rose garden, which in time has settled lower than the large main drain. Management is looking into this problem. The committee asked to have a new suggestion box placed in the bistro area so diners can make comments about their dining experiences. The committee meets on the fourth Tuesday of each month at 11 a.m. in the Lodge Conference Room. All members are invited to attend. Thank you, Bill. Okay, our next committee is communication with no representative. Uh, emergency preparedness. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, Gary Sturgeon, uh, 114 Um The EPC is moving forward on a little bit of reorganization of the committee and uh, our communications team, the FRS radio team, uh, all of the equipment has been ordered, has come in, and has been programmed. Now it just needs to be installed and get the antennas installed and things like that. And we'll be up and running. I noticed that the cabinets have been moved to uh, the radio room over there, the, uh, number four, <laughs> room number four. And uh, the cabinets are uh, on the wall and things are moving across over there, so that's good. And um, uh, next month, October, is a Global Preparedness Month um, worldwide. And we are signed up, the whole community, for Drop, Cover, and Hold on October 15th. And we'll have, be having a little uh, flyer going out on Art Home and Breeze uh, for October. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Okay, our next committee is finance. Well, I wasn't, I'll give a report. It's going to be quick. Thank you, Bob. <coughs> we had a meeting earlier this week. We approved or made a recommendation to the board to go forward with the resealing of this specific area, phase A, uh, with a caveat in that the estimates that were received were approximately 30 to 40 percent higher than what was allocated in the master reserve. We've asked uh, Jerry to go back to the uh, party that did the reserve study to readjust it to account for the increased cost that we had expected. Uh, there will be an overall budget uh, report to the uh, general meeting, really, on the 29th, and that's my report. Thank you. Next, we have landscape. Lynn. Our irrigation consumption for the year is down 30% from last year and down 20% from uh, the year before. Uh, Governor Brown wanted us down 25% from last year, or so we're sort of somewhere in between. Um, there is a lot of information out about 
what kind of water is in our pipes. I can't eliminate confusion, but I'll try to reduce it slightly. Until last month, every drop of water that came into Four Seasons was potable water, regardless of the color of the pipes. Last month, uh, our water companies continued a previous practice that had been discontinued this year, which was to introduce water into the system that came from wells deep within the Bowman Manning Basin. The reason they had discontinued doing that was because the EPA had changed the standards for the level of particulates of chromium in our drinking water. We've been drinking that water since inception here. So I guess we're all, you know, take six minutes off of our lifespan or something. But by doing that, uh, reintroducing the water into the system, there, it's now called non-potable. And they put that into the purple pipes. And the purple pipes are used for irrigation only. They go to the common areas, they go to the front yard cost center, front yards, and they go into the Springdales. Again, it's the same water you were drinking last year, but now it's considered non-potable. Eventually, the purple pipes will have recycled water, which is different because that's water that's been reclaimed, reprocessed, and introduced into the system. Now, our fountains out front and by the uh, window will always continue to have potable water because they're a source of drinking water for the animals around here. But if you have a, a house that is not in the front yard cost center, you still are using potable water. And you are subject to the potable water uh, restrictions. However, if the common areas and the front yard cost center in Springdale's since they're using non-potable water, are no longer uh, under the restrictions that the governor imposed. If everybody understands that and could tell me what I said. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lynn. Our next committee is Rules and Regulations. Carol? Thank you, Carol. Okay, social uh, safeties and facilities. Social will be uh, um, reported by Cindy. Do we have a representative from the Ad Hoc Interior Renovation Committee or Technology Committee? All right, so we'll uh, go into committee appointments and resignations. Uh, on page 45 of the board's packet, we received a resignation letter from Rudy Garcia from Emergency Preparedness Committee. I want to thank Rudy for his uh, participation in the committee and for the time that he was on there. Thank you for his volunteerism. Okay, on reviewing uh, and acting upon club and group application requests, we received none. And then if you'll go, please go to page 46 and 47, we have two applications for events. 
Uh, one is for Friday, November 13th, 2015. And the other is November 21st, 2015. If you'll notice on page 46, there was a use fee of $100. The, the reason why it was $100 was the, due to the number of guests that will be attending the event. I think we noticed that there was no cleaning. The, the Cindy, maybe you can answer the question on why there was no cleaning fee. Oh, there will be. Okay. There is. So, if it wasn't written in, then it just was a negligent error, but they will definitely be paying that. Thank you. And then the reservation on page 47, it, it appears to be complete. Okay. Any questions? No. All right, then we'll go into our activities director report on page 48. Cindy? Okay. Oh, I hope I don't have to. Okay, can you, can you see me now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so HOA events. We, of course, have our big HOA community garage sale that's going to be October 3rd. So jot that down if you want to find some more treasures. Um, you still have time to come up to the desk and sign up for a uh, city license and advertising and all of that if you want to be part of the garage sale to sell. So there's still plenty of time. Help yourself up there and they'll, they'll go ahead and do that for you. And it is uh, $6. <coughs> so check that out. And the time for the actual sale is 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. So that you'll know. Yeah, Vivian? Yeah. She was talking. I didn't know how much is it? $7. Yeah, $7. And then the next thing is the Holiday Harvest Craft Boutique. And we're doing it a little bit earlier this year because some of the crafters really wanted to get a head start and include Halloween and Thanksgiving and Christmas and Hanukkah and everything else. So um, feel free to come to that. That is going to be on Saturday, September 19th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. here. And don't forget, that's the one that's open up to the whole public. So make sure you get in soon and get the best items first. And uh, you'll love it. They're busily, busily crafting away. And they'll be doing door prizes and things like that to go with it free. So have fun with that. Um, next, social committee event. Ooh, this is one of our favorites. This is Beer Seasons Presents. <laughs> and that is the Halloween uh, Thriller Dinner Dance. And now, I mean, if you guys, whoever came, you guys saw, we rocked out that old RCM building, right? I mean, it was crazy. If you haven't been in here with the massive fluorescent uh, spider webs everywhere, and we've rented some secret scary stuff. So you guys are going to be really freaked out to come to this. It's going to be nice and spooky, but fun and entertaining. It's going to have dinner, and it's going to have music, and you'll have a blast. So the tickets for that, and you guys realize how fast these tickets are going for pretty much so don't be left in the dust on this. It's actually cool that Halloween is on a Saturday this year. Actually, October 31st is on the Saturday. So we don't usually, you know, usually we have it on Friday or whatever. It doesn't match up. Ah, but this time, it's going to be on the real spooky night. And that, tickets are only $20 for the whole fun stuff. And there's going to be surprises all throughout. Now, you remember in the last couple of years, we popped some really cool surprises. Last year, we had a uh, magician who brought back the spirit of Elvis. Ooh, it was so freaky. Remember that? And the ghost, like, flying through the walls. Oh, yeah, Disneyland has barely anything on us. <laughs> okay, so 
Make sure the tickets are going to go on sale on Wednesday, September 23rd. So don't be left on the desk in that. And now, oh, I'm so sorry to say this, but our amphitheater grand finale is going to be this month. And maybe this month we'll be in the real amphitheater. <laughs> I don't know if you came last time when we actually projected the amphitheater on the screen, just so you feel homey with all the bad weather that we've had. But anyway, that's going to be Sunday, September 20th. It's going to be at 7 p.m. And it's Barry McGuire. And uh, he was famous for a 60s song called The Eve of Destruction. And whatever. You can come rock out with us. It's going to be fun. And there are more doorless prizes. We're saying doorless because we're really anticipating we're actually going to be in that amphitheater. This, this time, yeah, we will. So, come, have fun, bring your favorite beverage in plastic containers, and uh, rock out with us. And then, there's going to be Magic in the Movie Theater on Saturday, September 23rd. So, come at the beginning of the week. And, Excuse me, Seth. Yeah. yeah. I think that's Wednesday, September 23rd. Let's say... Check at the front desk. <laughs> You're selling tickets to the Halloween starting on Wednesday, September 23rd. Okay, let me see if I wrote it wrong. Okay, I did. So can you check at the front desk and I'll give you the real right date. But it is that Saturday, okay? So check in there and the beginning of the week, I'll give you the right date though, when you go up there. We'll have a sign, we probably have a sign. Uh, then we end like this next week, whatever. But you know how we usually at the movie theater have two shows that you get to choose from? It's the 26th. Thank you. <laughs> okay, see, it's all about teamwork here. You know how we all are. So, some of us need more team than others. Thank you. So, come on, sign up for your favorite show, and it'll be a fun, entertaining thing for you there. And of course, there's no. Um, cost to that, so it's a great opportunity to see some new tricks that they have. <coughs> and then, if you like nostalgic radio, then you are going to love the last radio show performance that PAC is doing in the year, and that is, you know, they do their WFSB radio show live, um, and that's going to be Friday, October 23rd at 6 p.m. You can bring your dinner. That's a no-cost thing as well. And they're going to be showcasing some new sequels of The Lone Ranger. Oh my gosh, if you have seen, um, what's Wasco's first name? Tom. Yeah, Tom Wasco, sorry Tom. Um, Tom Wasco doing Tonto and switching hats. It's hilarious, and they have all the foley work with all the sounds and everything. So if you like that kind of fun, nostalgic entertainment for free with your dinner that you buy, um, come on down. And then they'll be doing another sequel of My Friend Irma, which I think was from the 40s and 50s, right? So come and check that out. Again, that is Friday, October 23rd at 6 p.m. Have fun with that. We have a lot of things. Fun Thank you, Cindy. Okay, we'll move into the manager management report. And in your information packet on pages 52 to 55 is the management updates and activity log. Did the board have any questions regarding those items? If not, we'll move on to pages 56 to 84. This is the correspondence log. And then on uh, 85 to 117, I did want to go over the uh, suggestions that we did receive throughout the month. And so we can get clarification and further instruction on who is going to address each issue. The first one is a handicap door uh, back entry to the salon. We received 10 requests. And, and that has been referred 
referred to the ad hoc? Interior model? renovation. Interior so that is assigned to the Interior Renovation Committee. Uh, we've received an attaboy for Arthur, who cleaned the paddle tennis court today. He did a great job. Arthur works for All About Cleaning, so we just wanted to make sure that he was recognized for his job well done. Uh, suggestion number three, chair exercise for residents of Four Seasons, uh, for less mobile residents. Um, that could probably be done with a sign-up through Carmen, if she'd okay. be interested, but residents can know that they can use chairs during the other exercises. We've had residents that have come in and use chairs during the exercise periods, the conditioning exercises currently, so that is an option. Okay, number four, always have somebody at the desk. I think, think I referenced that, it's not always possible. Thank you. The, the only way it would be possible is if we hired more people, which would increase your dues. Okay. Um, just as a note, we do when we are scheduling our associates, we do try to cover with double coverage for the events and for our busy peak times. Unfortunately, we're a very active community here, and so there is always something going on here, and there may be times when there is nobody at the front desk. We are working at trying to keep somebody there as often as possible. Um, it's a work in progress. Uh, no, suggestion number five is to have a gift shop. I thought that was interesting. I'm not sure where to go with that. Okay. Number six is floors are the floors are wet in the ladies' bathroom by the outdoor pool. Maintain the bathrooms more often. Uh, again, it, it depends on the amount of service that we're con we're contracted for. If we want to provide more service hours, then that would be something that we could submit to safeties and facilities. Uh, would we, could we look at this if it's just by the doors, perhaps it would need a, another carpet there, a rug or something? Absolutely. Okay, number seven, Euclid failed in its job to stay on top of things. Why no backup projector bulb? And this was in response to the, the projector in the theater. Unfortunately, we do have back, well, Fortunately, we do have backup bulbs. Unfortunately, the whole system fried. <laughs> and so we did not have a piece of equipment to replace it. So it did take several weeks to get a new projector. We were trying to determine if, it was re if we could repair it for a, a reasonable price or was it worth just buying a new piece of equipment. It was, it was about two thirds of the cost to repair it than to buy it, so it was determined to buy it. So it did take a little longer than we would have liked. However, again, if the board and the community wishes to have a backup piece of equipment, then we can do that. Um, there's been some suggestions that maybe we should look at retrofitting the theater with a HD large screen TV. And that's number nine. Oh, I'm jumping ahead of myself. <laughs> so we may want to consider a more updated system when, it, when we get close to replacing the projector again. Summit hours should be open the same as the lodge. We did receive two recommendations or suggestions. And I think they need to know on that one, we are budgeted only for the hours that is currently open. And if we, had, we added hours, we'd add staff time, which would increase our, our staff costs. So, and beyond the budget that's already there for the building. And as a side note to that, we have been tracking the usage during the hours, and it, I'm not sure at this point that we are receiving enough usage to support a 14-hour schedule. So maybe as we get more homeowners in, it may be something for consideration. Okay, recommendation number nine, replace broken movie theater system with big screen HD TV. So that, again, that's a recommendation next time it gets close to the the end of life on our projector, we may consider doing that. Number 10, Lodge Pool could have hours of seven, the Lodge Pool could have seven, have hours of 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. be designated lap swimming, walking times to avoid confusion. I think this is, um, I think it's 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Maybe, doesn't make sense. Yeah, it doesn't make sense to me, that's why I struggled. So it may be 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Yeah, 
currently we, the only time we really have designated is the uh, aerobics class. Water aerobics. Okay, number 11, please put a stop sign in front of the summit before the circles. And so should we submit that to safety of some facilities for yeah. consideration? Yeah. And also number 10, too. Okay. Um, number 12, vending machines by the pool. Well, I think the issue with vending machines is you get into um, vendors and uh, whether or not the turnover and the products and the machines and, and things like that. Except for Mondays, we have Smitty's, and I mean, we can, we can look at it. We can put this to safety facilities to okay. see if they have any interest. Okay. Number 13, if a dog park is approved for the summit, fencing would need to be installed at least 20 feet back from fencing of houses directly below on Calvert Park. I think at this point in time, uh, I don't think there's been any thought to, to allow dogs except for service animals. Uh, in, in, within any of the facility grounds. There was a suggestion and a proposal submitted to Safety safeties and, and facilities, facilities for consideration and, and they, of they, the installation They didn't of. want to take that forward. Okay. They don't okay. on that. Okay, so they've determined that they do not want to move forward with a dog park. Correct. Okay. Number 14, move one of the three doggy stations near the summit and place halfway between the doggy station east of Slippery Rock and east of Green River. Put it on Four Season Circle. I think that we can just go ahead and purchase. I think they're about 300 to 350. We can purchase one and just install it in the, in the location. Yeah, I think we've got a, we've got a map here for you. Okay, before. thank you. Okay, please provide water drinking cups in the RCN building. And I think the board agreed that we would go ahead and do that. Mm -hmm. So we'll make sure to get that stocked. Now, I think to remember though, we still, we try to maintain closed containers within, in our facilities. So the cups over there will be just single service cups like you would use if you were getting a drink at a, at a water fountain. It wouldn't be cups that you could carry around. So it would be really behoove everyone using the other building or any of the facilities to bring a closed cup container or a bottle. The uh, water dispenser at the uh, the, uh, the RCN 1528 building is uh, you can fill bottles in that with that container with that uh, dispenser. Okay, <clears throat> number 16. Need an exit door for residents at the RCN building. We do have two exit doors, so I'm not exactly certain what the request is. It's not Perhaps clear. people are not aware of the, the back door. Okay. And also, I don't know. Okay, number 17, light the flag if you're flying at night. And we do have a light for the flag. Unfortunately, I think the light bulb burned mm -hmm. out, so we had it replaced. It's something that maybe we'll put on a regular maintenance. And, and the thing is, if it's at night and you see that the bulb's out, just let the staff know the next morning so that they can go ahead and replace that. Number 18, have a combo computer craft room. Make both rooms of the craft room and move what few computers there are to one of the rooms in the North Rec Center. And that we have already moved the computers to the North Rec Center building. And we are looking at, that's one of the... Uh, things that are being considered on the, on the remodel committee, and that is to uh, put a doorway between the current classroom and the old computer room in order to join those two areas. And last suggestion is additional shelving for the library. I'm not sure where, but we did put that to the Interior Renovation Committee to yeah. consider some other options. <laughs> right. So that was the end of the suggestions. Any questions regarding any of the management items? If not, we'll move on to old business, there, which there is none, so we'll continue with new business. And I'm gonna turn it over to Eric. Um, before he starts with item A under new business, the reserve study approval proposal, we're, re we're removing the approval of the master reserve study as there was some adjustments that the Finance Committee had re recommended and we're in the process of having completed. So this would be for the approval of the Springdale and Front Yard Cost Center only. What is the deadline for, um, uh, will we 
have time to approve the next one before the right. due date to send this out? The revised master reserve study, is, I told SCT reserve consultants to have it submitted to me by uh, the 20, Wednesday the 23rd, I think it's Wednesday the 23rd, <laughs> and for review by the finance committee on the 29th. So okay. it would be approved at the October meeting, which gives us plenty of time to send out our budget packet. Okay. So this is just the front yard cost center and the Springdale's? So yes. that now that it rained on Eric's parade, okay. I'm going to turn it on over. <laughs> yeah, so this would just be to approve the front yard cost center and the Springdale reserve studies as uh, recommended by the finance committee. Okay. And saying that, do I have a motion to approve the Springdale cost center and front yard cost center studies? Mm -hmm. I have a motion by Wayne Staples. Second? Second. Second by Gene Sandoval. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Next on page 135 is a proposal from the Landscape Committee for Brad Alms Landscaping to trim uh, trees. Uh, the total cost for the common area would be $85,470 and for the front yard cost center would be $4,410. Uh, this proposal covers over 2,000 trees. There's a lot of trees. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the uh, proposal uh, bid to um, trim our trees in the common area of $85,470 and front yard cost center area of $4,410? So moved. Motion by Gene Sandoval. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Wayne Staples. Discussion? Uh, I think as, as Eric pointed out, our, our numerous trees uh, do require uh, maintenance. And I know the Landscape Committee, uh, when a tree fails, they think very whether or not it should be replaced at that point in time. So as long as they're healthy, we'll keep them, but we'll think that'll take another look at them when they, if they fail. So, um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Uh, next is another tree trimming proposal from O'Connell. Uh, it would be $460 for common area trees and $3,940 for the front yard cost center trees for a total cost of $4,400. Uh, there are approximately 100 trees that these would be trimmed. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the uh, trimming from uh, O'Connell Landscaping for the common area of $460 and front yard cost center of $3,940? So moved. Motion by Gene Sandoval. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Wayne Staples. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Next on page 139 is a proposal from the Safety and Facilities Committee to install a maintenance gate at the summit. Currently there's only a, a pedestrian exit gate, uh, so it's hard for any large access items like riding lawnmowers for the turf area to get in there. Uh, to install this gate, the cost would be $1,980. Uh, do I have a motion for the installation of a maintenance gate at the summit in the amount of $1,980? So moved. Motion by Eugene Sandoval. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Wayne Staples. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Back to you. My turn. Okay, okay, so next item on the agenda is uh, the asphalt slurry of the streets. The area that we're talking about is in phase A only, and that goes from the Potrero entrance gate all the way around to the Crooked Creek gate. And uh, the, the Safeties and Facilities Committee reviewed four proposals. They recommend that the board approve Nelson paving to complete the work. The total amount of work is $130,579, which includes the ceiling portion is $117,146 with options of $13,433. The options are that are, that are included and recommended include um, the rumble bumps at the Potrero gate, and I'm not sure if there's any at Crooked Creek, I don't notice those. The replacement of all the thermoplastic stop bars, stop signs, yield signs, and bike lanes. And then it also includes the crack filler if needed or and cleaning of the cleaning of the asphalt. Um, 
as Bob had mentioned, the concern of the Finance Committee is the amount budgeted in the reserve study was significantly less than the proposal when I discussed the the issue with the both parties being the reserve study company as well as the asphalt contractor. Um, a couple of items to remember. The proposal that's being recommended is that we complete a two-coat seal, which the reserve study only includes one. Um, it also is recommended that we include latex in our asphalt seal, and that is to make sure that it significantly reduces the amount of tracking of the asphalt seal to the pavers or cement, and it also helps give it a, a better, it's a better product. And then also, we're scheduled to complete this project in nine moves, which means they're out here for nine days completing this project. And he says every time we have an additional move, that increases the price a little bit. And this is in order to, to provide um, convenience to the homeowners because now we're not doing an entire neighborhood where you feel blocked in or blocked out. So they're doing a portion of a neighborhood and then doing another portion at a later time in the project. When I talked to the reserve consultant and I explained the, discre uh, the discrepancy between the contract price, even if it was a single coat, versus what he had recommended. He said he's kind of in a quandary and he's not really exactly sure what the correct number should be because when he talks to a number of asphalt companies, they are bidding anywhere from eight cents a square foot to 16 cents a square foot. And so what he tries to do is do an average of what is industry standard. Okay, so in our reserve study, it's, it's recommended or it's budgeted for 10 cents a square foot. Our contract is 13 cents and 13.4 oh, cents per, per square foot. But again, we're getting the additional move-ins, we're getting the additional the seal coat, and um, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> so in a sense, we'll be able to uh, have them adjust the reserve study to meet our needs and, and how we want to have it done. That's correct. And I, I have to remind everybody, we have not sealed these streets for probably seven years, if not longer. It could be anywhere from seven to ten years. So we've had a really good wear on our streets. What would you say? They, they've been done. Before we accepted the streets from Kayla, they were sealed. When was that done? At, at least four years ago, maybe five, but not more than that. Okay. It was, a, it was advised that it was longer than that. But I think with the product that we're putting onto the, to the streets, I think that we'll get a good wear out of it. I am sure that we'll at least get five to six years again. What, what type of notice are we going to give each group or each move in, as you call it? As much notice as we can get. We're mailing, emailing, phone calling. Um, it's recommended, and I've briefly talked to Gary about, you know, can we, and I need to reach out to the neighborhood watch block captains. I think that as many people as we can get to get the notice out, the better off it's going to be because this is generally the most difficult project to, co to coordinate and get people to cooperate. So again, I don't have a date of the project yet. He says once the contract's signed, then we'll get on the calendar. They anticipate getting this done in the next 30 days because they want to get ahead of the weather conditions. So they're anxious to go ahead and get started. Um, I still think that we need adequate notice, which would be anywhere from two to three weeks. Could this be, would this be done somewhat like we did with the Springdales, where you would actually have a week-by-week week schedule, and so all the schedules could go at one time. And we do have a projected map that shows the areas in color which are, are being done first, you know, the progression of it. Uh, again, I was told that once the contract is signed and we look at the schedule, we will get a, a final map, and so we can definitely distribute that to the homeowners. All right, we have a motion to approve the resealing of slurry coating of our streets, uh, phase A, by MPG paving in the amount of $130,579. So moved. Motion by Wayne Staples. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Gene Sandoval. Discussion? 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Motion carried. From reserves. From reserves. Thank you. Your turn. Aye. <laughs> Uh, next up is a proposal from the Safety and Facilities Committee on page 145. Uh, Willis Fagan has done a, a fantastic job in designing a, a system to decorate the ballroom. Currently, it, it's uh, very time uh, intensive and often slightly dangerous uh, way that people will get up on the ladders and try to hang things. So this would be a system that would go around the soffits in all three sections of the ballroom. It would have hooks and magnets so that people could easily put things up and then take them down. Uh, total cost to install this uh, through consolidated uh, construction, our preferred vendor would be $8,000. Do I have a motion to approve the uh, proposal from Safety and Facilities Committee for the, uh, the installation of a decoration hanging system in all three sections of our bar room, not to exceed $8,000? So moved. Motion by Gene Sandoval. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Wayne Staples. Discussion? Yeah, just to clarify that this is not just the installation, but it's also um, the uh, materials. Yes, it, it, it would be to actually construct it, build it, yeah. paint it, and install it. It, it would actually um, go within between the top crown molding and the lower molding along the soffit area here. What's currently happening, anytime they need to do any decorating, they're having to get up on a 15-foot ladder and having to actually go over the top to hook things behind the top of the crown molding, which is somewhat problematic because we have a lot of wires and other kind of uh, lighting and things like that. And it's uh, somewhat uh, stable. It, it's not very safe because they have to be on the second rung down on that ladder. And we all know what the little statements are on the ladder, do not go beyond this particular rung. This would allow people to actually probably hang things using uh, the ladder, but not going up quite as high, and even using things to hook, because there's going to be hooks approximately every 16 inches. There'll be metal plates approximately the same, same uh, measurements uh, that you can use with magnets, the whole lightweight materials and it will be almost in, uh, uh, invisible once it's, in, once it's up there. And just add another section of the decor. Uh, any other comments? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Next on page 146 is a proposal from Safety and Facilities. This is regarding the pool temperature at the summit. Currently the pool temperature is uh, set at 82 and sometimes fluctuates up to 83 degrees. Uh, the recommendation is once the lodge pool here is, is uh, not heated in the wintertime uh, to increase the temperature at the summit pool to 84 degrees. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the re uh, proposal from safety facilities to uh, maintain uh, the summit pool temperature at 83 degrees during the summer months when the lodge pool is open and once the lodge pool is no longer being heated to increase the temperature to 84 degrees. So moved. Motion by Gene Sandoval. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Wayne Staples. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Next on page 147 is another. I'd like to say, before I go on, I'd like to say this was a, a recommendation that was put in not just by the safety and facilities. It was a recommendation given to safety and facilities by the, some of the users of the pool. So they had done some research and suggested this compromise between the temperatures. Okay. okay. Uh, next on page 147 is a proposal from safety and facilities. Uh, with more events and parties at the summit, it's been found that the countertops are being marred and are hard to clean from glassware being set on them. Uh, therefore, the re recommendation is to purchase glass tops for these surfaces. Uh, the total cost would be $858.58. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the uh, proposal from Safety and Facilities Committee to um, put uh, glass, uh, protective glass coverings on the, the it's actually the wooden, the wooden uh, furniture at the summit uh, for an amount of $858.58. So moved. Motion by Wayne Stables, do I second? Second. Second by Gene Sandoval. Discussion? All in favor? 
Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Next on page 149 is a recommendation and a proposal to install ADA uh, automated doors at the RCN. Currently all the uh, access doors in both the lodge, not all the doors, there's, there's access points in both the lodge and the summit that have ADA compliant doors, but there's none at the RCN building. Uh, so to install them both at the side entrance where the rose, little rose garden is and also at the main uh, management entrance. Uh, the cost would be seven thousand six hundred fifty dollars. Uh, do I have a motion uh, to approve the proposal from Yuma Management Company for the installation of ADA regulation doors at the front doors at the RCN building and the, and the side door at the RCN building in the amount of seven thousand six hundred and fifty dollars? So moved. Motion by Gene Sandoval. Do I have a second? So moved. Second. Second by Wayne Staples. <laughs> Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Next uh, on page 151 is a proposal for some renovation of lighting controls. Uh, when we, uh, we being the association, took over the lodge, we had to do the same thing. There were some uh, specialized lighting control units that were installed. Uh, we need to do the same thing where we need to remove them and bring them back to more regular lighting controls. The cost to do this would be $4,295. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the request from the Euclid Management Company for the renovation of our lighting system in the 1528 RCN building in amount of $4,295? So moved. Motion by Wayne Staples. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Jane Sandoval. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Next on page 153 is a proposal from the African American Culture Club and the Activities Director. Uh, we had our first gospel music concert earlier this year, and the request is to have another one on February 27th of 2016 uh, from 4 to 6 p.m. in the Lodge Ballroom. There would be no cost to the association for hosting the uh, event. Okay, uh, do I have a motion to approve the request from the African American Cultural Club and Activities Director for um, holding a gospel music concert on February 27th from 4 to 6 at no cost. So moved. Motion by Gene Sandoval. We'll a second. Second. Second by Wayne Staples. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Uh, next is a proposal from the activities director for a piano player resident to play piano here in the lodge uh, on February not February, Friday, November 20th from 5.30 to 7 in the lobby. Uh, again, there would be no cost to the association. Um, do we have some questions on this one? Who would be playing? Yeah. Sally will be playing. Sally will play. And she, she's a pretty good piano player. She's a resident. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we got this one. So okay, I have a motion for Wayne uh, to approve the, uh, that they have a, a, a piano sing along on Friday, November 20th from 5.30 to 7 p.m. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Second by Gene Sandoval. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Next on page 156 is a proposal from the Activities Director and the Travel Club. Uh, the original travel expo that was going to be held on October 16th, there were some conflicts with some of the vendors uh, asking now to have a new uh, or to move the event to Friday, February 19th next year from 4 to 8 p.m. Uh, in the Lodge Ballroom. And again, there is no cost uh, for this event as well. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the request from the Travel Club to the Activities Director for change of date uh, from uh, originally October 16th to February of uh, this year to February 19th, 2016. So moved. Motion by Wayne Staples to a second. Second. Second by Gene Sandoval. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Next on page 157 is a proposal from the Activities Director. This would be for our annual Veterans Day event. Uh, it would include a, the Inland Empire Chorus, uh, the, veteran, uh, the VFW's Color Guard Service, uh, refreshments. Total cost would be $810. Do I have a motion to approve the request from the Activities Director for um, our annual um, Veterans Day um, 
celebration and event uh, in an amount of $810. So moved. Motion by Eugene Sandoval. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Wayne Staples. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Uh, next on page 158 is a proposal from the activities director. This would be for the holiday extravaganza. Uh, it would be a two-day event on Friday, December 4th and Saturday, December 5th in the Lodge Ballroom. The time is to be determined. Uh, the total cost for the event would be $1,158. Do I have a motion to approve the request from the activities directors for our holiday extravaganza for a two-day event February, I mean December 4th and Saturday, December 5th in the Lodge Ballroom $1,158. So moved. Motion by Wayne Staples to a second. Second. Second by Gene Sandoval. Discussion? Well, you can just say here, if the impact request is not approved, a chorus of resident Baja humbugs will be heard throughout the Four Seasons facilities. <laughs> <laughs> and Cindy will wear her Grinch hat. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, back to me. All right, so surprisingly, it's budget time again. <laughs> so part of the budget process is for the board to approve the 2016 annual budget, um, the annual budget report, as well as the annual policy statement and disclosure. It includes 25 pages of questions. And last year, I went through every single question. Uh, probably took us about 20 minutes. In the effort to save time, I reviewed it and have looked at the questions. The questions remain the same as last year. The answers remain the same as last year. I would recommend, if the board does not mind, approving the same uh, budget policy statement and annual disclosure statement as we sent out last year. last year. <laughs> uh, so do I have a motion to approve the annual <laughs> budget report um, as uh, stated to replicate the same answers as was released last year? So moved. Motion by Wayne Staples. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Gene Sandoval. Discussion? Uh, any one of you that were here last year and received this in the mail, you will just go back and read that one, and that's what you'll get again this year. So. Um, all in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion carried. Okay, and we have a late entry. Okay. I know you were anticipating. Anyway, we have a late entry due. This is a, a, an emergency repair, and unfortunately, we could not anticipate the emergency repairs, so it did not make our agenda. However, I don't think anybody wants our entry pond to remain unused and, and functioning until next next month. So we did get a proposal. We looked at having the repairs completed and it was determined that by time we buy the parts and the, have the labor for the repair, um, again, we're looking at anywhere from a um, 60 to 70% cost of a replace, an entire replacement. And so it is our recommendation that the board approve a replacement of the pond equipment for a total cost of $3,341.51, which would be considered a reserve item. Uh, I do have, uh, I have to start saying different name. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Russell from our, our management company uh, for the repair of our facility water feature in the lodge entrance. $3,341.51. So moved. Second. Moved by Gene Sandoval, second by Wayne Staples. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Out of reserves? Out of reserves. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. <laughs> no further business. Okay. Is there nothing more to tell us? So, okay. No. Nope. a motion for uh, adjournment. So, so moved. Motion by Wayne Staples. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. We are adjourned. <laughs>